Fight of the night tonight was uh, Kamaka versus Kelly. Two performances a night were um, Pineda and uh, Verna. $50,000. Congratulations to them. Dana, uh, before we get into the main event, uh, is there any update on Sean O'Malley yet as far as uh, what, what his condition is? He's getting a CAT scan right now. Okay, fair enough. Um, I guess it's far too early to ask how Daniel Cormier is doing. He made it clear he couldn't speak or couldn't see, I should say. Right. Um, any idea, you know? No, no yeah. idea. We're going to get him checked out. That looks bad, though. I mean, that doesn't look good at all. Yeah. So let's get your thoughts on the main event. Obviously, a very, very tight fight, you know, all the way through. Uh, what, what were your thoughts on the fight itself? Yeah, it was an awesome fight. I had it 2-2 two to two going into the last round. And, uh, you know, it, it was the fight I think everybody thought it was going to be. Um, and uh, it was exciting. Both guys, how, how tough are both of those guys? I mean, both guys got poked in the eye. Both guys got, got rocked. Both guys, you know, they, they fought their hearts out, man. It was an incredible heavyweight championship. I, I was just telling, uh, I, I, I was, uh, people were texting me saying that they were in bars and the bars were packed and going crazy. My son, who's going to USD, has a place down there on the beach. And uh, he said people were lined up on the boardwalk looking in his window watching the fight. And so it was, it was one of those, uh, it was one of those heavyweight championship fights that felt big and, you know, everybody was watching. It was fun. Obviously, we're all going to hope that Cormier makes a, a full recovery and that that eye thing is just temporary. Uh, but I'm curious. I mean, you came in saying there's no way it's this guy's last fight. You know, with, with, with the way things played out now, do you still believe that, that there's no way that was Cormier's last fight? Yeah, I, I think, I think uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let him do his thing. I'm not going to comment on it. I guess he's not going to be here tonight. So did, yeah. did he did he give you any message or did he say I, no? I didn't talk to him. He walked right out of the octagon, did his interview, and I'm assuming he's on his way to the hospital. Lene, yeah, yeah? Lene, yes. Yeah. So you got some information you can't share with us, or no, no. I just think you know Cormier, the way that that guy is and the, uh, the competitor that he is, he he says I'm not going out like that. I, I don't know. It's just that's my prediction. With the eye poke, does that make it more that way to you, that there was something that maybe you can clearly point to that he was, you know? Yeah, maybe, but listen, you, you can't look at the eye poke and, uh, you know, take that away. There were two eye pokes. They both got poked in the eye, and Cormier, that eye was hurt before the poke. Right. I, I was, we, were, we got a big group text that goes on, and I was like, there's something wrong with Cormier's eye, and, uh, and then he got poked after that. That didn't help. But they both got poked. You, 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 you can't use that as, a, as an excuse. Obviously, we're not going to match make tonight, as usual. But John Jones jumped on Twitter and said, coming to heavyweight, you know, I'll see that title soon. As you sit here, I mean, does that make sense, a heavyweight title fight for John Jones? Or you got Nganu out there, who I'm certainly believes that he's next. I mean, is there something that stands out to you right now as, like, this would be the way to go? Francis is definitely next. I mean, you, you can't jump over Francis. Francis has been out there destroying everybody. And if you look at how long ago uh, it was that he got that title shot, he's worked his way back. It, 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 it belongs to Francis Ngannou. But, yeah, John Jones going to heavyweight is very interesting. All right. Just a couple quick ones. Uh, we got the Adesanya Costa announcement officially tonight. We got a date. It's a new date. Uh, a location was missing on, on the announcement. Do we know what? a location? Yeah, I know. It was probably overlooked by the editing department or something like that. So can you reveal where that's going to take place? <laughs> Not yet. Um, I don't know what you guys think, but I, I, I predict that's fight of the year. Fight of the year. Is there any chance it happens here, or are we, are we thinking Fight Island? I don't know. All right. Uh, that leaves the main event open on September 19th. Colby Covington, Tyron Woodley have both said we're fighting each other on September 19th. Is that main event done? Is that the fight? Uh, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's done. Okay. Fair if enough. it's not, listen, they're both talking about it on social media, so... Hopefully it's done. Nice. And last thing for me, uh, Michael Chandler, kind of a, a big-name free agent, has said that he wants to come meet with you, wants to meet with the UFC. Is that a guy that, that, that you're interested in maybe bringing to the UFC? I would love to meet with him. Yeah, that guy's, that guy's, uh, that guy's earned it, man. I'd love to meet with him. I don't know. If tonight is Cormier's last fight, how amazing has he been to work with, and what's his legacy like? The best. I mean, the guy's been the best to work with. He's, he's, uh, he's easy. He wanted to fight everybody, you know. He's willing to do anything. He's a great guy. He's a great ambassador to the sport. And uh, it's, it's been fun. 
I think my, my saying he won't retire is me kind of hoping he doesn't retire, you know. Um, but whatever, whatever he wants to do, I'm happy for him. If he wants to fight, I'm happy for him. If he wants to retire, I'm really happy for him too. Do you think the eye poke was the deciding factor, or do you think Miocic was just able to make the enough adjustments to... I think his eye was hurt before the poke, and the poke definitely didn't help, but you can't look at the poke and say, oh, the poke. Stipe got poked hard, too. <clears throat> they both got poked. Sounds weird, but we know what we're talking <laughs> about here. Um, yeah, it was weird. They both got poked. Hard. Um, with John Jones, I know you said in an interview yesterday that you were waiting for a reply from him about the light heavyweight title. That's the first thing we heard from him right there, is on, on social media. That he wants to go to heavyweight? Yeah. You say Ngannou's next, so would you rather he defend the title and then move up if he wants to, or do you guys still have negotiations to work out because I know things aren't the best between you at the moment? I, I, yeah, I don't know. There isn't anything I'd rather have him do. I mean, um, the guy either wants to fight or he doesn't. If he wants to fight, he'll let us know, and if he doesn't, he won't. Dana, just in your opinion, what was it that made Cormier such a great fighter? What, you know, it's like he had a, a combination of things. But in your mind, what made him great? Start with his physique. Um, kidding. Uh, you know, the funny thing about Cormier is, he, you know, he's one of those guys that doesn't look like, um, you know, he could be the light heavyweight and heavyweight champion. But, man, that, that guy is tough. Gritty. He's got he's got a really good fight IQ. Um, he he's good at breaking down his point. He's just he's tough. He's a tough guy. You know he he stood in there. Look how much bigger Stipe was than him tonight, and he stood in there toe to toe, and and, and banged it out with, with Stipe. Um, this time, the second time, and the first time they fought. I when I really realized. Um, how good Cormier was and that he was real was when he was in strike force. And, uh, you know, you know, it's hilarious is I don't watch any of the competitor stuff. I usually never watch the stuff unless it's a fight that, that I'm interested in. But I w ended up watching that. I remember where I was and what I did the night that I watched that fight. And uh, it, it was the Josh Barnett fight. And the way that he beat Josh Barnett and what he did to Josh Barnett is when I said, God damn, this guy is really really good um and that was when i first noticed daniel cormier and, and and thought that he was real and just to you know go the other way you have a young guy like o'malley who's a, an ascending star and he has this happen to him tonight um you know guys can go either way when they have this happen you know he's overcome some adversity already in his career but any concern on your part that you know ha you know he's an injury prone guy that you know that it, something like this physicality may stop him from reaching his full potential? Yeah, you never know in this sport. You never know um, what's going to happen. You have some guys that never have injuries. They can come on. Look at Robbie Lawler. I mean, Robbie Lawler is like one of the most durable human beings that I've ever met in my life. Some of the wars that that guy's been in, and he's back in the gym on Monday and never has any really serious injuries. And then, you know, you look at a kid like O'Malley. But even a, a guy like Conor McGregor in the Max Holloway fight, you know, he got injured and some of our other, you know, stars that were on the rise. I can't remember off the top of my head, but there was, a, there, was, there was a point in time when I was like, Jesus Christ, another guy just blew his ACL or, you know, needs shoulder surgery or something. While there. It was happening to us for a while there. And then lastly for me, I just want to ask you about Steve Bay. You know, to a certain degree, you know, because Daniel is such a popular guy and so many people like him, it's almost like Steve Bay gets overlooked, you know, because everybody's, you know, looking at it. The first time it was D.C. trying to, you know, be the double champion. This time, you know, he's going on. And do you think that, you know, Steve Bay maybe deserves to get some love from the fan base that, that he hasn't gotten given, you know, given the how much people care for Daniel? I, I would disagree with that because um, I, I would disagree with that because when, when there hello is that better uh when you have a, a, a massive fight like tonight like i said when i came in here this thing was big this thing did really well it felt it's because it takes two guys to do that and I, the reason this fight was so big and so good is because everybody out there absolutely positively knows that the two baddest dudes in the world faced off tonight and everybody wanted to see who was going to win. I mean, there were, like LeBron James and, and, and was tweeting tonight about the fight. You know what I mean? 
when, when, you, when you have this many people, you know, you got people standing outside somebody's window watching through the window to watch the TV. There's a big fight on TV, and it's because of both guys, not just one. Dana, uh, Jim Greeshaber, cage side seat back here, please. Hi. Um, can you just talk about what the feel was like in there? This is the biggest fight you guys have had with no fans. So what was that feel like inside the building with no fans in there with these two guys? Yeah, I mean, I feel the same way you guys felt. You were nervous, your hands were sweating, your legs were bopping up and down, I mean, it, it, and you couldn't wait for the fight to start. Um, it, it's the same thing, but, but it's not the same at the same time because of the fans. It, the place would have been going crazy during that fight, and, and you miss that. I miss it. I'm sure you guys miss it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really know how to explain it, but we're missing the fans big time. But still, what a unique, cool experience to be sitting in that room with a handful of people and watch that fight live. And to be able to put out a product like that for the people watching around the world and, and not miss a beat and keep doing it all along. What a run this has been for you. I mean, your thoughts, this is a big, big night for you and a big night for the company, but a nice run so far through the pandemic, able to keep going. It's been amazing. Yeah, it's, it's been amazing. And, um, yeah, I'm having fun. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. And this year I had to face a lot of different challenges that I've never faced before. And I like it. I like it. I've had, I've had fun through this thing uh, as sick and demented as that sounds it's been fun for me biggest challenge you've ever faced without a doubt yeah. without a doubt thank you thank you dana so the right up here so this uh, there are still fights coming up but this technically caps off the summer for 2020 for the ufc you guys went to abu dhabi you came back you've had you know change-ups and main events but you guys kept going how would you sum up the summer for the ufc in 2020 well, not just the summer, I mean 2020. Um, 2020 has to go down as the shittiest year in the history of the world. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said a second ago, I, I, lo I love the challenge of it, and it's been, uh, it's been interesting. Uh, can you just talk a little bit about looking forward to the fall? Obviously, Adesanya and Costa, Gaethje versus Habib is getting a lot of people excited. Just as the boss, you know, just looking forward, how do you feel about it? I'm everything? very excited. Uh, I'm very excited about what's coming up in the fall. Um, we have a ton of fun fights. And like I said, Adesanya versus Costa right now is, is the fight of the year. I mean, I, I, I predict that's going to be an incredibly badass fight. One last one from me. Um, we were thinking about October is when we would see things like World MMA Awards, and you guys have done a great job coinciding with the Hall of Fame and everything else. As of right now, is there any idea about pushing it back, or could you do like the other award shows have done in recent months and go you know, virtual with those things if you feel like you want to honor them this year? Well, the MMA Awards aren't mine. Um, that's Fighters Only that does those. Um, I don't know what their plans are, but, uh, you know, if they could financially do it, they should do it. Um, uh, and, and yeah, I th I, we're going to do the Hall of Fame this year. We're, we're, we're still going to induct people into the Hall of Fame. Even if there are no fans, or would you even consider doing it virtual? Yeah, there's, there's not going to be any fans. I, I don't see fans happening anytime soon. And I'm not even thinking about it. I'm not even considering fans. You know, what we got going on right now has been perfect. It's been safe. And um, no need to fuck with this right now. We'll, we'll keep doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, all the way over here. So Hi. we know that Francis has next in terms of a title shot. John Jones is throwing his name in. And we saw Biggie Boy get back on track tonight. Daniel, in his post-fight interview, said that he didn't want to fight if it were not for a championship. If he does come back, where do you see him kind of in that mix? He said that tonight? He did. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You don't know if he's in the championship mix still, or you don't know where he would fall? Who would he fight? Stipe? I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> that it? Oh, sorry. One more question. Um, yeah. 
Um, have you talked to or is there any interest in Michael Chandler from Bellator? Yeah. The guy just asked me that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, I, I said, they said that, I didn't know this, but they told me that he said he wanted to meet. And I said, I'd love to meet with him. That, that guy's earned it. And uh, yeah, love to talk to him. Sorry about that. They know here, I got, cool. I got, I got fresh questions. Yep. Would y'all go back to, to Fight Island this year? Yeah. Is, is that in the plans or is it just, a, just an option? Yes. I said last time we were there, this wouldn't be the last time we were there this year. We will go back to Fight Island. You know, that's what, any international fight we do has to be done there. How does it feel to have Fight Island come off the way it do? Because I cover more than one sports, and people were talking about, we thought your boy Dana was crazy, and now they want to do what you do. So how does it feel to set the wave, even though you took all that flack starting off, now everybody want to bite what you do? Yeah. Um, people have been thinking I'm crazy for a long time, but we, you know, if you look at what we've done, I, d I don't come out and say I'm going to do something and then not do it. If I say I'm going to do it, we're going to do it. And... Uh, I knew we'd be first. I knew we'd figure it out. And I mean, when this whole COVID-19 thing started, I was, I was trying to figure out how to build a lab, I was literally going to build a lab. And, you know, if, if we had to come up with scientists who could come up with our own COVID-19 testing, I would have. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's what we were working on. And final question, will Stipe, you think Stipe will be more active now that this trilogy's over with, still fighting once a year? Well, I think the, the, the reason that Stipe wasn't active before is because he was hurt. I mean, that last fight with Cormier, he won the fight, but he got busted up in that fight. And, uh, you know, he needed to recover and heal, um, you know, before he took another fight. It, it's all going to depend on, 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 you know, how he is physically after, after tonight. You go in and fight one of those heavyweight championship fights that these guys have fought in this trilogy, you don't walk out of that thing, you know, 100% healthy. Would you mind to talk a little bit more about uh, Adesanya against Costa? Why are you so excited for this fight? Because I think stylistically it's the perfect fight. If you look at the way Costa fights, he puts pressure on you. He stays in your face the whole time. Adesanya likes to stay on the outside and pick you apart. I, I think that fight's going to be an absolute war. Uh, just stylistically it matches up really, really well, and uh, both guys are, are animals. Both guys want this fight really bad, and I just I think it's going to be fight of the year. Yeah, my last question. Uh, though, uh, this, uh, Paulo Costa was talking about maybe having the ultimate fighter as a coach with a designer. I know it's not going to happen, but uh, did it, it cross your mind? Did you think about it? About being a coach for the ultimate fighter? Yeah, designer and we're still figuring out the ultimate fighter. The ultimate fighter is going to happen this year. Um, we just got to figure it out. And, you know, uh, with all the crazy shit that's going on this year, um, it, it sort of put the ultimate fighter on the back burner when, when we were getting ready to do it. And now we're back to talking about pulling it off. But Costa and Adesanya was your option somehow, somewhere? Oh, I don't know. I mean, he wants to do it really bad. And I love the fact that he wants to do it. So, yeah, if, if I can make it with him, I would definitely. because Just for the simple fact that he wants to do it that bad. Yeah. Hey, Dana, one, one last. I forgot to ask you about Junior. Uh, do you have that talk like you had with Chuck one time? He's lost three in a row by knockout. Uh, I think he's lost six of his last 11 by knockout. You know, people talk about him being the great boxer. He's getting knocked out a lot, including three times in a, in a year. Uh, do you think it's time for him to think about it? Yeah, I you know I obviously gotta. I, I don't I don't like to do stuff like that tonight, but think of, go home, think about it, take the weekend, and then matchmakings on Tuesday and talk about what we think for JDS. He's the nicest guy in the world. Love that guy and. Uh, um, yeah, yeah.